Hello guys, today is gonna be an exciting and interesting video because I'm gonna be building an RC balsa wood glider, just like in the old times. And this is the classic construction and nowadays it's very hard for me to find one of these kits. It comes in this kit, by the way, in this box. And in here you have everything you need to build it from scratch. Uh, well, the pieces are, some of them are already cut in shape but it comes with the plants and everything else and you have to put everything together from scratch. So it is the riser 100, 100 inches in windspan equivalent to 2.5 meters and the box is not that big because as I said, everything uh, comes as a raw material, which is balsa wood, plywood and spruce and maybe some other hardware accessories that we will need. But I have to put also the electronics like the servos battery and my radio system and also some covering that we'll, we will see in the video later on. So let's get started with this build. It's going to be really, really cool. So I'm gonna start building this classic construction balsa wood glider. I love kits like this, but they are becoming very hard to find, especially here in Europe. The kit comes with the plans, it comes with one sheet that shows the wings and the fuselage and then another smaller sheet that shows the horizontal stabilizer and uh, some other small parts. The process is actually very straightforward but I follow the instructions because I don't want to make a mistake and damage something. Building this project took me about a month up to the stage of the flight. But you are going to see the whole process in a very compact video and I'm going to try and explain everything. I also started working in an online course for beginners, so if you are interested and want to learn more about it, let me know in the comments below. This video is going to be part of that online course, it's just one section, but the actual video will be over an hour long and it's going to explain everything in detail. So what you are watching today is just a very short version but it's very nice to have a compact version so you can see this video and enjoy it. So as you can see, I'm putting the formers in place and putting the fuselage together and then I'm going to apply some glue. In this case, I'm using CA with a kicker or accelerator to make it harder and faster. After that, following the instructions, I start putting the balsa reinforcements and for that I need to measure each of these strips because there are many strips for different sizes and different parts, so to not mix everything, I have to make sure I'm using the right one. I have to say that I'm a metric guy, I don't like imperial units, although they are widely used but they should be illegal. I'm telling you, they should hang all the guys who use imperial units because this is preposterous. Luckily I have a ruler that displays both units and I got a little bit used to it during the month that I was working with these plans and all of these measurements. Balsa wood is a very lightweight and low density wood, so it's very easy to carve and work with in general. After giving it the shape that I wanted, now it's time for the sanding, and it needs a lot of sanding. For that we need to have a sanding block, which is just sandpaper that you can glue on the face of a block of wood. And that way you have a flat and hard surface for correct sanding. Then it's time for us to start working on one of the inner panels of the wings. Following the instructions, I had to lay down the trailing edge 
one of the spars and then start placing the ribs. I'll let you watch the whole process. The first rib have to be glued with a precise angle because of the dihedral both wings are going to have. For that, we have this wooden template that will give it the right angle. Now let's take a closer look. The next day, that section of the wing is ready. The glue has set and the structure is very strong. I just have to glue the last stranger under the wing. It's obviously the turn of the push rods. This glider uses nylon tubes as push rods and they work fine. They are very flexible and light. And now I'm going to put the servos. I'm using micro servos, but they are very strong and they are metal gear. They're gonna do the job just fine. This glider was originally designed to support standard servos. The standard servos are very big and heavy, so I'm saving a ton of space and weight, although I will have to put more weight afterwards to balance the airplane. I still have a lot of work to do with the wings, so let's get to it. This is day three of building this project. In the first day I did the fuselage, it was quite simple. And then um, the second day I started doing uh, a bit of one of the wings, also put the servos in place, the, the push rods made out of nylon tubes and I also finished the, the nose which is it takes a quite a bit of work to shape it because it's a whole block of balsa wood and it's pretty much finished I would say I, I just need to uh, sand it a little bit more with a, a finer grid paper, sand, sandpaper and yeah it's pretty much done and about the wings, well, the wings are getting their shape. They're beautiful, they're really nice. Look at that. And these are both um, inner panels of the wings. We still need to finish the outer panels to uh, reach the 100 inches of the total wingspan. And here, both of them are joined by this um, brass tube with also um, a very heavy tube that joins them together but I need to finish that and that's the step I'm working on now but it's taking shape and three days so far so let's keep building and see what happens at this point I'm going to finish the strongest part of the wing which is the middle part where the two wings join together there is a brass tube on each wing and in the middle we put a music wire the same diameter of the brass tube. It will hold the two wings together and it will support any strong forces. So to maintain these brass tubes in place and to support all these forces, we have to put all of these reinforcements that I'm doing right now.
In the plans we can see the front view of this section and the profile view of each rib and how they look with these reinforcements. And then I will glue something called shear web that will reinforce the spars. Now I have to prepare the space for the spoilers. The spoilers are basically done because they come with the shape. I just have to cut them to size and then make the space in the wind ribs to put them in place. According to the plan, we have to put these little pieces of balsa wood, and this is to make easier the covering process around the spoilers area. The wood canopy has to be sanded down to shape in the intersection with the wings. And finally I'm going to finish building the wings. So I'm going to use this baking paper to protect the plants and start building. I've lost track of how much time I've been building this glider, but today I'm finishing this outer um, wing panel, which is from the right wing, and I still need to cut here and finish some details, uh, put the wing tip in there, and this is the, the inner uh, right panel. So these two go together like that, so this is going to be the right wing, but I still need um, to finish some stuff, I need, to, I need to do the horizontal and vertical stabilizers, glue them in place with the fuselage. Fuselage is pretty much done. Uh, I just need to finish off with a fine grit sand, sandpaper this nose part and maybe around here. But yeah, it's pretty much done. Um, and then we need to do the covering. So that will be the next step the major next step and that would be almost the final step after I finish the, the rest of this. So um, I'm, pre I'm pretty happy. I've been doing this, I think it's been one week already. So yes, we're very close and let's go to the next steps.
then we have one wing structure ready. We have to sand down the imperfections and make it even, and then we will have one wing ready for covering. Halfway through the process of covering, we'll also put the spoilers in place. The last parts we're going to build are the horizontal and vertical stabilizer with the elevator and rudder. These are the easiest parts for building because it's just following the plans, cutting some sticks and gluing them in place. We need some more sanding here and more sanding there, and we have the entire structure ready. Let's see how it looks now. And now I'm going to start with the covering process. For that I'm going to need a special tool, which is the iron. This iron is especially designed for this application, but if you don't have one, then you will have to use a, a common iron. But I wouldn't recommend that because it's very bulky, heavy and big, and you cannot reach many parts of the curves and, you know, it's gonna be a mess. But it's certainly possible, just very uncomfortable. To start off, I'm going to start covering the smaller and easier parts. So I'm starting with the vertical stabilizer, then I will move to the rudder. So that's a way to practice and see how the material behaves, and that way you don't mess the bigger parts like the wings. What I'm going to use for the red translucent material is going to be solar film. The white is going to be monocoat, and this process needs a little bit of attention to detail, and it's gonna take a while. A bit longer than I expected because it's been a few years since the last time I covered something with monocoat or any other covering material of this kind. The most complicated parts to cover are the wingtips and the nose of the airplane, because they are rounded and you have to be very patient and have some technique, but you get very good results when you have that patience. We are nearly there, I'm going to put the control horns on the elevator and rudder. I'll also connect the push rods and adjust them. And I will adjust the length of the strings that will control the spoilers. This is being controlled by one servo. Then I put the rest of the electronics and set it up which is very simple because it's just three servos or three channels and there's no need to make any mixes but I do some adjustments like adjusting the rates, exponentials and some trimming and that's it. The next and very important step is to balance the airplane or adjust its center of gravity. For that I'm going to use some weights made out of lead but you can use any other kind of weight like coins and other metallic objects. The CG location is shown in the plans and is a small range, so make sure to have it very well balanced to have the best performance. I checked for the last time that everything works correctly and then we are ready to go and fly. The location I've chosen is great to fly this glider. This is a place called Bray Head in Ireland. The wind is in the right direction facing the cliff, but the speed of the wind is very slow. So today is going to be a calm flight and let's see how it goes. And it's at this moment that we see our glider flying that we feel really proud, because that's a machine that we build with our own hands and ingenuity, and is actually flying. Few experiences can compare to this feeling, and it feels great. 
That's why I encourage you to build your own machine and not buy it already made. You can do your own things. Trust me, it feels great. Now, enjoy the rest of the flight. As I told you in the beginning of the video, this video will be part of an online course that I'm already working on and it's gonna be released next year. If you are interested in learning how to build RC airplanes, how to connect all the electronics and all the basics about aerodynamics, let me know in the comments. I left a link in the description below as well so you can subscribe with your email address for any future notification about this online course. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next project.